Have you been having trouble sleeping? Today, I'm going to look at the problem of insomnia and how we can treat it with both non-drug measures and some medications that you may not have heard of and that aren't as commonly known that can actually help with insomnia. Okay, so now is the time to get a pen and a notepad. I'm going to go over a few medications that you may not know about that might help you with your quality of sleep. Now, if you have not seen my other videos on sleep, I will put a link to those in the description of this video because I do go over different ways that you can get a better night's sleep that do not involve medication. There are alternatives. There is also cognitive behavioral therapy, but I wanted to bring some awareness to some of the medications that exist that are not addictive, can be quite effective and taken in a low dose, and in some cases can even help with chronic pain that is associated with insomnia. Let's have a look. Why is sleep important? We know that sleep is important for learning and for memory. Our brain goes through a lot of changes as we're sleeping and it's filtering out a lot of the different memories, thoughts, ideas, and also toxins that we've been exposed to throughout the day. It helps with body restoration and the repairing of different tissues. And it also helps our body to enhance its immune defense. Sleep is of utmost importance. It is not just an inconvenience if you have fallen into a poor quality of sleep. Insomnia is defined as dissatisfaction with the sleep quality or quantity. There is also a problem of people who sleep too much or find that this quality of their sleep is not refreshing. And we'll address that here as well. Insomnia issues have been associated with one or more of the following features. So either the person has difficulty following asleep, difficulty staying asleep, or early morning awakening without being able to return to sleep. And we see this a lot in older people who wake up around four or five in the morning. They actually are still quite tired, but they just are not able to get to sleep. Some of the symptoms of insomnia are as follows. If you have some of these symptoms, you may be dealing with a pattern of insomnia. You have trouble falling asleep. This can mean lying in bed for up to an hour or more, tossing and turning and waiting to fall asleep. If you are in bed for more than 15 to 20 minutes and you have not fallen asleep, the recommendation would be to get out of bed and do something that does not involve blue light, like a screen, until you feel sleepy. You really want the bedroom to be an area of calm and of rest. And if you're thrashing around, cannot sleep, it's usually a better idea just to get up, get out of bed, and do something that gets your mind off of sleep until you feel sleepy again, and then you can go back. Another symptom of insomnia is when you wake up during the night and you have trouble going back to sleep. Some people wake up because they need to go to the washroom during the night, but if you wake up, go to the washroom, and then you have trouble falling asleep, and that becomes a pattern, that can be an issue. Waking up too early in the morning, which we already mentioned, feeling tired when you wake up, like you did not get enough sleep. Sometimes this happens for the first hour or so after we wake up, and that's quite normal and is not a problem. But if you are still feeling tired throughout the day and you never really feel rested, that's when things start to become an issue. If you feel grouchy, sleepy, or anxious, and unable to get things done during the day, this could be related to your sleep and to either poor quality of sleep or poor quantity of sleep. And if you find it difficult to pay attention, focus on tasks or remember to do things, this could be a sign that your body is not getting the rest that it needs during the night to wake up refreshed and ready to go in the morning. Sleep and the immune system are bi-directionally related. The immune system activation alters sleep. If you've ever had a cold or a flu, you do not sleep as well. And that is related to the levels of cortisol in the body. Cortisol is something that stimulates us to stay awake. It interferes with our sleep. People who are on different medications like prednisone, we recommend taking these usually in the morning because they do tend to interfere with the natural mechanism of sleep and taking these things in the morning is more helpful. Sleep also affects our body's defense system, and I spoke about that. It affects our immune system and our body's ability to fight off infection. Poor quality sleep of sleep over a long period of time leaves you more predisposed to more severe infection and 
complications with chronic illnesses. Different treatments. So there are different ways to approach insomnia. We have lifestyle changes, cognitive behavioral therapy, different medications, and sometimes meditation and light therapy can also be helpful. First, you need to define, is this insomnia or this, is this another issue that I'm dealing with? You may have sleep apnea. And if you have a partner who sleeps in the same bed as you, they may be able to observe that either you're snoring a lot or they notice that you are not breathing properly while you're sleeping. Or sometimes if you're waking up gasping for air, these can be some symptoms of sleep apnea. And it would be recommended that you talk to your doctor and be assessed to make sure you don't have sleep apnea. Because if you do have sleep apnea, you are not getting a good quality of sleep and your body is not getting enough oxygen to keep you going with optimal energy throughout the day because that oxygen is not saturating your tissues adequately. Restless leg syndrome is also very common. It can happen for a variety of reasons. There is treatment for it. And so you should ask your doctor, could this be restless leg syndrome? Sometimes insomnia happens because we are very anxious or we are depressed. And this is something that could be a symptom of depression. So it's also important that you talk to your doctor and be assessed accurately as to whether insomnia is actually a symptom of something else. How can you get help? Before you go see your doctor, it would be helpful for you to document your sleep for seven days. This doesn't have to be super complicated. I'm going to give you a table that you can fill out and it will help your doctor and it will help even you to see your pattern of sleep, your pattern of insomnia, what is helpful and what actually might hinder your sleep. It's only seven days and it doesn't have to be complicated. Here is a sleep diary, and I'll put a link to this in the description of the video. And it basically just outlines when did you go to bed? What time did you go to sleep? How long did it take you to fall asleep? Do not use a clock to measure this. It's important that you not be looking at screens and not be obsessing about the time when you do this. When you wake up in the morning, you can estimate, oh, it took me 15 minutes, or it took me two hours, or it took me forever. This does not have to be exact. This type of information and taking this information to your doctor will help them to accurately make an assessment as to what is the best approach to treatment for you for your sleep issue. Like I said, there's different treatments and cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to be very, very effective and often equally as effective as taking any kind of sleep medication. Sometimes it's even more beneficial because it, it actually causes us to get into the right habits and the right patterns of thinking that allow us to get a more natural sleep. There are different apps that I reviewed and I will put a link to my sleep and immunity part two video where I review a few of these apps that have been shown to be quite effective. Okay, some off-label medic medications for insomnia. So trazodone is a very old medication and it was designed as an antidepressant. It is a fairly unique antidepressant. It is a serotonin modulator, and it is not incredibly effective for severe depression. However, it can help with mild to moderate depression. It can also help with insomnia, and there are some studies showing that it can help with chronic pain. So sometimes you can use trazodone, and you actually resolve a few problems all at the same time. You might resolve some neuropathic pain, help the person with their mood and help them get a better night's sleep. And those things we know can definitely be linked. Uh, some of the downsides about trazodone is we can see next day sedation and sometimes motor restlessness. So a person who feels just a little bit more agitated. That's why it's important with any medication and including with trazodone to start your dose low and go slow and see if you can get the dose that is the lowest and the safest as well as the most effective for you. These types of medications are also associated with anticholinergic effects, which means they can cause some dry mouth, constipation. They aren't always recommended for different medical conditions like glaucoma. And so it's important that your doctor be aware if you do have any of these conditions, especially if you're speaking to a doctor via virtual health or a doctor that has not known you for very long, they really do need a full assessment of your overall health. Trazodone may be better for sleep maintenance, but it is not the most effective medication. So it doesn't necessarily work immediately, although I have seen it work quite well and quite quickly in some people. Diphenhydramine. Over-the-counter 
sleep medications are usually antihistamines and diphenhydramine is the most common antihistamine that is used for sleep. This is not very popular because it does cause daytime sedation. If you are at your pharmacy and you're just walking down the aisles and you're looking for a sleep aid, sometimes they're even called sleep aid or sleep help or they're branded under different things. It's basically an antihistamine and these can cause sedation the next day. So you may, might sleep very well after taking it, but they can have uh, an effect where they really do cause you to be groggy the next day. These are not recommended for long-term use because of this. They can also cause cognitive impairment, especially in the elderly. And they are not recommended in the elderly as well because they can cause, if a person is impaired and they are in their home walking around, there is a higher risk of falls or other injuries. So caution is to be taken even with medications that we can buy over the counter without a prescription, and this is one of them. Also anticonvulsants, so gabapentin in a low dose or pregabalin in a low dose, otherwise known as Lyrica are sometimes used and can be effective. However, the low dose part is very, very important, but you could ask your doctor about these and whether these would be appropriate for you. These are often used if you are also dealing with some kind of pain syndrome like fibromyalgia, neuropathic pain, or restless leg syndrome. The downsides of this one, these ones are that we do sometimes see weight gain and we can see next day sedation. Also with gabapentin, sometimes you start very low and you do have to slowly increase and we do sometimes see some cognitive issues in people with that as they increase. Central nervous system depression and cognitive impairment, impairment can occur. I've particularly seen people who are really sensitive to pregabalin, even in low doses. And so start low and go absolutely as slow as possible. And you can ask your pharmacist how to do this if you are starting on one of these medications, because they can work very effectively. But how you start them is very crucial to whether they will be successful and helpful for you. Ketiapine. Ketiapine is a medication that was originally designed as an antipsychotic used for a lot of different psychological disturbances. However, ketiapine in very low doses has been known and in practice seems to be able to calm the mind very well. So that person who just has racing thoughts cannot shut their mind off at night has tried all of these other non-drug ways to turn their mind off at night and to get a good night's sleep. Sometimes ketiapine, especially if it's anxiety related, if the problem is anxiety related, sometimes ketiapine can be helpful, which is why in, this is often used to treat insomnia that is associated with some kind of generalized anxiety disorder. So if you are prescribed this medication and you look it up and you see that it's an antipsychotic, do not worry, they're not using it in a dose that is for treating someone who is in a psychotic episode. This is used in a very low dose to help aid in sleep, and some people find it to be very, very effective. Some of the natural supplements, so melatonin has the most evidence. This is usually taken about half an hour before bed. Our bodies naturally produce melatonin, but as we age, our, we produce much less, and so melatonin is somewhat of a more natural way to help supplement the hormone that our body naturally produces. Valerian and L-tryptophan have been used in some cases. However, in the literature, we have seen inconsistent results. Sometimes these ones work, sometimes they don't. Cannabis is also something that is somewhat new. You need to be really careful with the edibles because these are not regulated. And so you really don't know how much you're getting, even if it says that on the package. What's important is to know the ratio between CBD and THC. THC is more of a stimulant and CBD is what helps to aid in sleep and getting the right ratio can be tricky. So I usually recommend just using the oils, not the edibles, and then getting the right ratio. Then you know what ratio is best for you and the lowest, most effective ratio is what you want. Most of these medications with the exception of some of the more natural supplements and CBD are by prescription only in Canada. Thank you so much. I hope this was helpful. If you'd like to know more about sleep medications in the future, I'd be happy to share it with you. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful and what you would like to know more about. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.